Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Today I want to talk about a really simple method to create a stopwatch for your custom maps. And I want to talk a little bit about performance and ways that you can decrease the lag that redstone clocks create. Okay, first let me show you the stopwatch. It's really simple to use and it can all be done wirelessly, which is great. So I'm going to start timing here and you'll notice on the right side I have a score. Uh, my score is incrementing at one point per tenth of a second. So basically, uh, if you take off the last digit, you can see the number of seconds. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 8, etc. And if you include the last one, that's the tenths place. Uh, if I want to stop timing, I can stop right here. It'll keep my score to 24.4 seconds is how long I was timing for. And I can reset my time right here really really easy to use you can do this all wirelessly of course since it's all just done with commands and which is also very good uh, this is the timing circuit it's very simple this is all just very very easy to build uh, let me explain how it works and i'll talk about performance considerations uh, it's actually very simple how it works i have two variables or two objectives if i go scoreboard objectives list we can see, well, there's team in there, but really timing and time are the ones that are used by the stopwatch program. Uh, so timing is basically just gonna be either one or zero. It's one if you're supposed to be timing right now. So when you start timing, you set the player's timing objective to one. When you stop timing, you set it to zero. That's all you have to do. Um, this reset just clears all the player's scores. <clears throat> Over here, We've got a, this is the timing circuit. Uh, this is a really small one tick clock. So it turns on for a tick, off for a tick, on for a tick, off for a tick. Now one tick is one tenth of a second unless you have a lot of lag in your system. So uh, basically what these do, these command blocks, is they'll look for any player who has a timing score of one. That means that we should be timing them and it'll just add one to their time score. So basically every fifth of a second, every two ticks, uh, this command block will get triggered, and then one tick later, this one will get triggered. And so basically 10 times a second, you add, you add that one point to their score. And you only add to their score if they're, if they're supposed to be timed. So this is actually accurate down to the 10th of a second, um, because each command block actually checks for pl only for players that it should be timing. So that's how it works. It's really simple. Uh, can, I mean, you can see again, it's the time score that uh, that's incrementing. Kind of hard to see on this sandstone, but if you if you have the background against the command blocks, you can see it really well. Um, I'm gonna stop timing. So let me talk a little bit about these redstone clocks, though. Uh, if you've ever built a redstone map and tried to run it in multiplayer, uh, these clocks will lag your game a lot. Now here's the reason for this. Every time a block changes anywhere in the game, it needs to, basically it needs to notify all the players that are connected to the server that the clock, or that a block has changed. Well, every time a redstone signal changes at all, it means the block has changed. And whenever a block changes, it sends the entire chunk to the client. And that's a lot of data. That's, uh, that's probably several kilobits. And when you're doing this every 10 times a second, that can just take up a lot of bandwidth. And when the server has to do that for each player, it's a, it's a big deal. So it'll basically only send the chunk to players that are within range of that chunk. Basically, players within the view distance of that. Uh, there's a trick to get around this though. There's a way to run clocks like this and have the server still keep track of the clocks and run the commands and everything without actually sending any updates to the client. The way you do this is you keep this clock circuit uh, somewhere near the spawn chunk. I think there's a square of diameter 17 chunks around the spawn point for the server that always stays loaded and it always updates all the redstone within it. Uh, but it won't send any of that data or any of those changes to the, to the people connected to the server unless they're actually within 17 blocks of the spawn chunk. So what I've started doing with all of my maps is 
I have a region that you spawn in, you know, a 22 block by 22 block region that you spawn in. And I have all my clocks near that, and when you spawn, you just get teleported really far away so that you'll never be near the spawn chunk. So if you're making a custom map, that's what I'd recommend because you can really cause a lot of lag with a, a very fast clock like this. But uh, yeah, hopefully that made sense. And I think this is a really cool system uh, just because it's so wireless and so accurate. It's And you can even, if you want, um, I mean, you can keep high scores, right? Because uh, because everybody in the everybody's going to be in the list uh, on the sidebar that score list, so it'll automatically keep high scores for you. Um, you can also, or it'll keep the last score anyway. Uh, you can also use um, the command blocks to test for scores that are you know below a certain threshold or something. If you want to have like, uh, you know, how long did they last in an arena, or how long do they take to uh, to complete an objective, you can test for that with command blocks. So that's pretty cool too. I think there's a lot you can do with this. But I talked a lot and I wasn't really doing anything. Hopefully you didn't get too bored. But it's some really important information for those people who are making maps. That's about it. Thanks for watching.